Good morning, my friends. Doc here with another episode of Paper Doc Paper Talk coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico. We are going to talk about the pens that I have currently inked. I will exempt the box of Twisby Ecos over here and Eco Tees, but we will talk about the box of pens that I had recently inked all the pens that I had purchased over the summer in Germany this year. And the other box contains all the rest of my currently inked pens. And I hope you will enjoy seeing all of these with their inky combinations. And I will meet you all over at my little writing desk by the window. See you there. And here we are at the desk. This is the box with the pens that I purchased in Germany and that I am using right now. And I'm also gonna put into this video the three pens that I have on my desk. So, uh, as always, I'm using Tomoy River Notebook 52 grams and okay let me get started with the pens that I have on my desk you all if you've been here before you've probably seen the Lamy 2000 with the broad double broad oblique nib and I, this is really, I think if I had to pick a pen that's my favorite, it would be this one. It is September 7th. So, not likely that you notice the change here, but there is a change. I have inked this with a different ink gusp. It was empty and so I thought, ha, ah, what am I gonna do? Um, am I gonna use the same ink or something different? Oh, la la. This baby needs some cleaning. No. No biggie. Didn't see that. So I really like the ink wind window. And this is the ink that I put in here. I got it in France this summer. So and I really wanted to use it. And it's very... It's really close to the one that I um, had in there before, but definitely more red. I hope that shows on camera for you. I don't know that I look at this and I'm like, dang, these are so alike. Yeah, didn't was not much of a change, I must say. And then, I have the Opus 88 Coloral in Orange. That my friend Alexandra filled for me because she tried the pen. It has a broad nib and the ink is I'm not saying it wrong. Wearing ghoul. <laughs> Where is it? It is not wearing ghoul. It is colorverse. Taepyong Xiong. Day. <laughs> Sorry. Prob 
probably misspelled that too. I don't know. Color verse. Taepyeong Seongdae. And I had already opened the back of this pen. So I'm going to shut off the airflow while I have it on my desk when I'm not writing. Then one of my favorites, I mean, I love the Pelicans. I love all of them. And this one, definitely one of my favorites. Pelican Grand Place 620. Also with a broad nib and the ink is Birmingham Pen Company Copperhead. I keep on looking at this and I wonder if this looks a little bit lighter than it did before. And I had two samples and I may have filled it from the different sample now. So I wonder if there was a slight difference in the inks. Such a beautiful pen. And a gorgeous two-tone 18 karat nib. Yeah, love it. These are the three pens that are on my desk. And so the germ pens from Germany that I got this summer, I keep in this red cigar box. And these are the ones that remained from my inking recently. And you may wonder where's the rest. Here they are. I had trouble with a bunch of these, so I bagged them up, labeled them with a the problem, even though I also noted the problem in this notebook. But now they are ready to go to my friend Joel, who is so awesome at fixing pens. Sadly, I was not able to catch Kirk of Pen Realm at home because I have two of these guys that have nibs with problems. Okay, so here is one of the Parkers that I got at the flea market, and I'm going to label them, distinguish them a little bit by the name of the flea market here. That was Finstello. This is a Parker 45. And the nib is a broad, but it does not really write like a broad. I have another medium that writes broader than this guy. And so, like I said, from the flea market in Finstello, and the ink is Colorverse. Valles Marineris. And I looked it up. It is, that is the name of a canyon on Mars that is deeper than the Grand Canyon. More spectacular. Yeah. It's a great, reliable rider. And a bit of a problem with this one is that you really have to push to get it shut completely. And of course, we wouldn't want it to be open. Yeah. The other Parker is this one. And I don't know what the model name is. It's a great writer. The other Parker that I got did not want to write with the ink that I inked it up with. So all of the ones that I had sorted out right away, I will 
mess with them soon or like i said send them off to be re repaired this is also colorverse and this came in a set of three small bottles that i had shown you before and i have the third one also the third of the second set of inks also in a pen right now oh I classified it as a medium. Not sure if that's true, but that's how it looks like to me. Also from the same flea market, this Pitycon 150. M150, I should say. And this has a medium nib, not gold. And the ink is a sample. Robert Oster, African gold. Here is a pen where it says made in Poland. It has a very interesting filling mechanism that I showed in the other video. It's really, even though it's fine, you know, I love my broad nib. It's still a great, reliable writer and the ink was a great choice because it's so nice and crisp it's diamond steel blue i really enjoyed writing with this i wonder if these all were sitting in the sun and that's why they are the ink has been pushed out a little bit but you know that about me i usually have either ink or dye on my fingers next one from the flea market there and the last one too is this mont blanc three four two let's call it a medium nib And this is Birmingham Pen Company Milkweed. Nice dusty purple. All right. The other Mont Blanc with this amazing double broad oblique nib was from another antique market in Rüsselsheim. Mont Blanc Meister Stück 12. And the ink is Birmingham Pen Company Sweetheart. And I have to tell you that this was one of the pens that were hard to clean, so this ink color is definitely not necessarily the true shade of the ink. Now come my Kavikos from the store in Uelzen, paper store, old stock. This one had a bit of a scratchy nib that was easy to fix with, um, <sighs> what is it called again? Goodness, I'm escaping the word. Micro mesh, micro mesh. Yes, it's a broad oblique 
nib and this is a Capico, no not a broad, a medium opaque. It's a Capico V2 in gray, which I love. And the ink is Ferris Wheel Press Double Raspberry. This has the original price tag on it, which of course still in marks, which I love. And it, I'm keeping it on, on it, of course, as well on this one. This is a Capico V61. Got my ink scribble here. Oops. V61, and this is a medium nib. This is a piston filler. I could not get the cartridge filled pen to write nicely, so I have to investigate a little bit more. And the ink is Diamond Red Dragon. Love it. Reminds me of communication breakdown. And the last one is the same model with a broad nib. Oh my goodness, I gotta get this. Ah, oh, something to wipe off the ink here. No problem dealing with the shimmer ink here. Broad, and this is Diamond Memory Lane. And that's it for part one of the currently inked. You'll see the other box and the other video. I'll see you soon.